guess what, guys? Yes, it is New Pen Day. <laughs> um, so, uh, welcome back to my channel. This is Lao with Kenchan Crafts. And I just recently bought this Visconti pen from uh, Atlas Stationers. And um, also, I am an affiliate with Atlas Stationers. So, I do have a code down below, um, Lao10, if you guys want to shop at Atlas to get 10% off your orders. Um, but yeah, so. I got the Kaleido Unicorn Galaxy, and this is a 14 karat gold nib, um, and this is the Visconti. I wanted to have the Visconti Homo Sapiens as my very first pen from Visconti, but it's okay. I have always wanted this pen when it came out because it was so pretty. I'm a sucker for like turquoise. Um, or teals and just any blues that are very, you know, not the basic blue, right? Not the, the simple blue. And it was just so fascinating. But for $700, I could not justify getting it. And then it was on a, such a good discount that I, you know, like, again, it's not a justifiable price, but it was on sale and I'm, I'm just really bad with sales. Like when there's a sale, I jump for it because obviously, you will never get it at any better price than this. Like even secondhand prices are still a little more expensive than how how much Atlas um, was able to reduce the price. And plus, um, I also messaged uh, Brendan from Atlas Stationers to um, to pull my order. So like they had it um, on their um, live order pulls, and that was just so much fun. Um, and so exciting. So uh, I have opened this already and I have inked it up, but I'm just going to show you the um, unboxing experience. This box uh, is just a white sleeve that came out. Um, pretty s simple, but this box is gorgeous. It's like a gray with some um, like a light tan and silver uh, with, you know, the V logos all over in a geometric shape. It's really cool. <laughs> They're just all V's, but they make this nice, uh, like, hexagon shape. That's amazing. Um, let's see. I got this in a broad nib. I thought I was going to hate it, and I wanted to, like, grind it down. I still think I will grind it down. But, um, well, I'll talk about that in a bit. <laughs> so the pen comes like this in this really nice padded, like, sleeve here. It's so nice. And so it kept the pen pretty safe. And inside, under the box, is the Visconti pamphlet with the, um, let's see, well, the dealer stamp should go there, but this is the international warranty. Um, and if there's anything wrong with the pen, um, I think that Visconti um, and your retailer will help deal with the issues. Now the issues I did have with this pen, um, there were a few issues, but uh, let's look at the pen first. <laughs> oh my god, just, isn't that beautiful? I was really debating whether or not I loved this pen because it was a little too blue for me. Like, I like things that have some, like, differences in it altogether. Uh, but this pen is, I don't think the camera captures how beautiful it is, but it does have a lot of like sparkles throughout, which do feel a little on the, like, I don't want to say cheap, but, um, it is what the pen is, um, like uh, the name of the pen, like Unicorn Galaxy Unicorns, this, uh, pretty sparkles, um, it's like flakes of uh, iridescent rainbow inside. But what I really love about the pen is the are these um, white misty s swirls and the really, really um, light lavender that just kind of like goes all over the pen. I wish there was more of that because that's what I loved about this pen is the misty purple and the misty whites that just kind of swirl all over this gorgeous turquoise body. 
and um, there's not a lot of that, but enough to make me say this is a beautiful pen in my collection and I love it. So, yeah, that's, I don't see a lot of people with this pen on YouTube, so I just wanted to share this with you guys, whether or not you <laughs> want it uh, to buy this pen or to just, um, you know, experience it vicariously through somebody who does have it. Um, I hope that this video does that for you. <laughs> The pros of this pen, beautiful body, lovely turquoise color. If you love turquoise, this is a, a great pen. Um, these uh, swirls are really pretty if you get a nice design one. These are, um, these resins are made by Jonathan Brooks and this is the Unicorn Galaxy one. I hope to see more Unicorn Galaxy resins in the future made by him. Um, this is a power filler, so it holds a lot of ink and it does have double reservoir. Um, and so like there is a chamber of ink in the front and then a very large chamber of ink in the back here. And if you have this uh, <coughs> end cap here closed all the way, none of the ink in this chamber will flow to the front chamber. So you have to open this in order for the ink to flow into the first chamber. And of course it's got the, the Pontio, I think. I'm not sure what the name of this um, bridge. I should know this by now. I've watched so many Visconti videos. Um, but yeah, the, the clip is the same clip from all the Homo sapiens. It has the um, Visconti logo in the, the Visconti logo on the um, finial here, which is part of the my pen system that. It's a magnet that you can take out, and I can put like my initials, uh, L, Y in here, or I can put like um, the zodiac signs. There's uh, a lot of options that they have to replace with this V, but it looks nice like that. And then the cap band here is just, again, geometric um, design with the Vs inverted upon each other, lined next to each other with like this leaf in the center. Um, and so it creates this nice geometric design. Yeah, it's really nice. And this is a silver trim one. So I, I like gold, but the silver trim goes so well with the turquoise and white. And then, of course, the pen has the hook lock safe or hook safe lock capping system. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it's so easy like it's, it's a spring so there the cap is very heavy and it has all of that in there like it's a spring double uh, inner cap to keep the nib um, from drying out it like opening or uh, open and closes the cap very easily so it's a nice thing about the Visconti um, hook safe lock system on all of their pens so here's the nib this nib is actually smaller than my Pilot Custom 823. It it looks smaller, um, but it is a new nib. Let me see if I can zoom in here. And um, I'm not quite sure what the design is. It is new. It's a 14 karat broad nib. Um, and I think the feet is plastic. Um, on the Visconti Homo Sapien Bronze Age, that one most likely is an eb oh, I don't know if they're ebonite feeds. They're probably still plastic, but um, these Viscontis are supposed to be super wet. So if you can see there on the nib, the tipping there is pretty thick. It's a broad nib anyways. Yeah. Okay. But the nib is really pretty. I do like that nib. Um, it's not as pretty as the Homo sapien, um, but I think that's, you know, it's, it's, it's a different design, so that's nice. Okay. Wow. It's so fast to close. It's springy when you push it in and then pull it out. <laughs> 
it's pretty secure. So I'm sure that uh, they they have that this inner inner cap on the inside is very well made to keep the nib from drying out. Okay, the pen does post. So let's do a uh, just a quick look at uh, comparison with other pens because it is kind of a big pen. So I have here, it's standing next to Twisby, uh, Twisby Eco, my Leonardo Memento Zero, Lamy All Star, um, the Pilot Vanishing Point, Sailor Progress Slim. Platinum Century and the Cabego Sport, uh, or AL Sport, and so it looks to be like this. You know, it, it's it's a larger pen, uh, and these are all very long pens. So it's slightly bigger than my longest. Um, you know, the generally longer pens. Then let's have them all uncapped. The Eco is the longest. Um, and it's about the same size as the Lamy All-Star. The Leonardo is slightly shorter than all of them. Um, and of course, these are the Japanese pens. They're definitely smaller than the Italian um, brand pens once it's unposted. Um, of course, the Pilot Vanishing Point doesn't post or unpost, so it's gonna be the longest in this form. And then if you post your pens, which, for the longer pens, I don't really post, but they do get very long when you post it. So as you can see, when posted, the um, Visconti Kaleido is super long, like it's almost won't reach or won't fit this, um, you know, case of mine. Um, so yeah, it's the longest posted. Um, second would be the Lamy All-Star and then the Twisby. Um, and so because it's so long, I do not recommend writing with this posted. It's just very back heavy because the cap is heavy as it is a super heavy duty cap. Um, and that makes sense. Like it should be heavy. The pen itself is also heavy. So like it's, it's pretty balanced. Yeah. So. And then this pen does weigh around like 41 grams. So that's about 12 grams heavier than my Leonardo, um, fully capped and posted. Um, but if unposted, this pen is about 29 grams. So um, it's about the same weight as a posted Leonardo Momenta Zero. So for me, that is perfectly fine, whether I write quadrupod or tripod. Um, this pen is comfortable. It is slightly on the heavy side. So if you cannot write like with a 29 gram pen, this is a little heavy. I do have this inked up with a very special ink that made me love this broad nib. Um, I don't write with broads. <laughs> and um, if I do write with broads, it's most likely going to be for shimmers. And so, um, but the problem with this pen is that it's a vacuum filler. And I didn't want to put a shimmer ink in there because it's going to be very hard to clean a vacuum filler. However, after inking it up, it matched so well that I've, I thought to myself, you know, I might just ink this pen up specifically with this ink or very similar inks with sh shimmer properties. Um, however, with, you know, if I do change an ink, like if I do fill it with a different ink, I have to be very careful because any shimmer particles in here or any like leftover ink, if I ink it up with another, a new ink, I'm, I have to put this in an ink bottle in order to fill it up because it's vacuum filler. And so when you push down a vacuum filler's um, piston downwards, it's going to dispel ink. So if there's any ink left, that little bit of ink will mix in with whatever bottle of ink you have. And that may and most likely will contaminate the new ink bottle. So I, th I think I might have just, you know, have to ink this up with the same ink every time. 
and I'm okay with that because this ink is just beautiful. So I have it inked up in with my Ferris wheel press, Tokyo Bay Blue. Um, and this one is, I'm not sure exactly what the story behind Tokyo Bay Blue is, but the, the cover on this box shows lots of these very beautiful blue pens just stacked up. Um, and so it looks to me like Tokyo Bay Blue is, um, you know, reminiscent of like, I think the beach or the oceans. Uh, in Tokyo, as well as just love for fountain pens, because <laughs> fountain pens are all over here, uh, as well as books, so it's like a library, a library of fountain pens. Um, and this is a very, very lovely teal blue ink, and it's got silver shimmers. And um, this this one sells out very often. <laughs> so I feel like with this broad nib, I'm gonna use up a lot of this ink. So I'm gonna need to buy a second one for backup, yeah. So as you can see, this the color on this um, this box is a very, very bright teal. Um, I think my camera picks it up as a blue, but it's it's exactly the same color as this box. So Ferris Wheel Press did a great job with this box. Um, the ink itself looks more blue, but when it comes on paper, it is exactly like the box. So with that, um, let's let me show you a writing sample of how this nib writes. The nib is very smooth and it is tuned very well. However, this side of the nib, you can hear that scratch. It's very sharp, it's super sharp. So, um, but not a lot of people write reverse. Um, if you have a broad nib and you like sometimes to write fine, you can re do reverse writing, but <laughs> with this nib that I got, I can't reverse write it. Um, but like pens are not meant to you know be used to reverse write so um when i do go to the pen show i think i might have them um grind it down like one pen size or one nib size so maybe like turn it into a medium and maybe even a cursive italic smooth medium um with keeping the same flow but i love how this one writes um, especially with a dry ink, uh, a, a dry shimmer ink. Let's see, so this is the Visconti Kaleido. Unicorn. Galaxy. See how smooth that is? And then the color is just so pretty. And when it dries, it's gonna have that beautiful shimmer. And because it's a vacuum filler and with a shimmer ink, I'm gonna have to like swirl it, you know, turn my pen from time to time um, in order to keep the, the shimmers um, from settling in one spot. This is um, Ferris Wheel Press. Tokyo Bay Blue. Smooth from every angle and <laughs> like that's what broad nibs are they're just smooth that from every writing angle because of the tipping material is so is you know there's a lot of tipping material and I just love that it's so smooth so I am very happy with this Visconti nib um, after writing with <laughs> my uh, one of my favorite teal 
inks. Um, let's see. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Even though it's a broad nib, I still find myself wanting to write like small, <laughs> even though I shouldn't. Like I won't, my my letters will be all jumbled up. But So let's zoom back out and show you guys how pretty this ink is. My camera is not doing this justice, but when I edit it, I might actually, it might look good. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> Um, but overall, this pen matches this ink to a T. I think so. Um, and like this is a bright turquoise with this bright teal. It's just a match made in heaven. My two favorite colors in one go. <laughs> so, um, I was pondering over wanting to return this and I, you know, at the end of it, after looking at this and after seeing how this ink behaved so well coming out of this nib and just at the price I got this for, like, it would be ridiculous for me to return this um, for petty reasons. <laughs> um, and I had thought that I wouldn't want to write with this pen because it's a broad nib. I wanted, and I wouldn't write with it until I ground it down to like a fine, um, a Visconti fine, which would be like a medium. And, um, and then I just don't, I didn't like that very sharp, scratchy top side of the nib, uh, which, can, you know, can be fixed very easily if I grind this down to a um, Visconti medium. Um, I can have the nib meister fix that part of the nib to make sure that's smooth as well. Um, so I would love to get this grounded to a medium so that it's just slightly, you know, less thick, but still very nice and juicy. Uh, wet writer uh, and so when I reverse write I can reverse write to a fine tip so wow beautiful oh and then this is also numbered I think it's a I think it there's like a hundred eighty of these pens I'm not sure what the number is but I have 152 is my pen number um, yeah so well I hope you guys enjoyed uh, you know looking through the Unicorn Galaxy pen with me. It is utterly a stunning, you know, just stunning pen. Very different in my collection. Obviously it's blue. I have a lot of blues, turquoise, teal pens, <laughs> green pens, um, but that's what makes me happy. It's what I love. It is my kind of pen. And so, you know, as a collector, my collector brain wants it. And I use all my pens, so I'm a user first and a collector second. And um, like again, it can't just look pretty. It has to be. It has to. <laughs> it has to write well, um, because like I even you know for me to have thoughts of returning this pen because I know I won't use it because of the broad nib, that shows that um, my inner self is a user, um, and um, I know that pens where it writes too broadly or I don't find a good pen ink combo. I just don't want to use it. And it makes me feel terrible to, you know, not be able to use a pretty pen that <laughs> I have in my collection. Um, and so I think like someday in the future, um, if there are pens that don't spark joy anymore, um, and I don't really seem to write with it, um, that those should go to a new home. And for someone who will love that nib and love the pen, um, and there's no reason for me to um, to keep it if I'm not gonna ever use it. <laughs> so, um, like the collector part of me doesn't really want to keep it, you know, a pen if I can't utilize the nib, um, and if I don't like or love the nib. So. Uh, all my Leonardos, um, I love their nibs. I love writing with them. So there's uh, probably <laughs> almost zero chance that I would sell any of them. Um, 
the only time I might sell them is when I fall out of love of the, you know, the look of the pen and I don't touch it for a long time. So, but this one I find myself, I will be using a lot because I love shimmer inks. Very, very um, good shimmer inks. And this is a very good shimmer ink. Uh, it's only clogged my Twisby twice, um, which is more than it should. But I, I have full faith in my Visconti that it will not clog it because it's a broad nib. Visconti is, has a super wet ebonite feet in them. And um, this one holds so much of that shimmer ink in there that I am not gonna have any issues with running out of the ink anytime soon. But because it's abroad, it will use up a lot of inks, inks, and that's what we want, right? We want to use up our inks. <laughs> so, um, all right. I think I've talked enough, uh, and you know, but I had a lot of fun, and I hope you guys did too um, in watching me, you know, write and talk and look at this pen. Uh, please leave a like comment down below um, you know any thoughts you have on this pen and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos in the future and uh, until this next video I or until the next video I will see you guys next time bye